Pokemon with guns. If you haven't heard of this game yet, then you've been living under a rock for the last week. Power World is the brand new indie game which is a cross between Ark Survival Evolved and Pokemon. And it's breaking huge records right now with over 2 million concurrent players on Steam. However, unfortunately for Mac gamers, there isn't a native macOS version. However, Crossover steps in and allows us to run the Windows version of Power World on a Mac pretty much straight out of the box. And pretty much everything works great, including multiplayer with other Steam users, including crossover and Windows players. However, there are a couple of issues with the game. For example, we're not able to use controllers at the moment. There's a bug with eye shaders, and some people are a little bit disappointed with performance. However, in this video today, we're going to be fixing many of these issues, including a performance fix, which improves frame rate by over 100%. And we're also going to be fixing those eye shader issues. And we'll be taking a look at a performance mod, which hugely improves improves the performance of the game on lower end Macs with only 8 gigabytes of RAM, for example, the M1 MacBook Air. So in this video today, I'm going to take you from the very beginning, how to install Crossover, get Steam installed. And then after that, we're going to be looking at some of the performance fixes that you can apply, as well as an ultra performance mod that's going to hugely improve frame rates as well and fix some of these bugs. So the first thing I'm going to do is to click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you click the link and make a purchase, then I'll I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, we'll be taken to the store page or you can go to codeweavers.com and click on buy now. I do recommend making a purchase of Crossover Plus, which comes with 12 months support. If you want to get a discount, then make sure to use the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New and just apply here. And then you're going to get a 20% discount. And anyway, once you're ready, you can click the buy now button and then you can go ahead and fill out your details. Alternatively, if you want to try this out, you can also go to the Codeweaver website, click the try now button, then you can fill out these details and get a fully featured 14 day free trial. So that's what we're going to do today. Here we're downloading Crossover 23.5, which is the latest at the time of recording. So once Crossover is downloaded, we're going to go to Finder and then we're going to go to our downloads folder. We're going to find our Crossover zip file here. So all we need to do is double click. It's going to extract. And then we have the Crossover app here. We're going to drag and drop this and put this into our applications folder. Once that's copied over, we'll click on applications and then we're going to scroll until we find the crossover app. So go ahead and double click. Here it's saying crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are we sure we want to open? Press open. So once this is open, we've got the option to install applications and games. So the first thing we're going to do is to download Steam. So click on the Steam icon here, we'll do a search for it. Then we're going to click on install Steam. It's going to download and install Steam into a brand new Windows 10 64 bit bottle. Here we're just going to say yes to installing these various fonts. A lot of progress is going to happen in the background you don't have to click anything in particular. So now we're going to go through the Windows Steam setup. So just click next, select your language, click the default installation. Now we're going to allow this to run Steam. So this is downloading a 300 megabyte update. Just let that finish. So now we have the Steam login screen. We can log in with our username and password, or we can scan the QR code with the Steam app on a smartphone. So now we're logging in. And now we're in the Windows version of Steam. And if you want to progress any further, what I'd also advise you to do is to shut down Steam so that we can change some of the graphics settings within Crossover. Basically, we need to quit out of Steam, press exit here. So now that the Steam bottle has been created, we can just change some settings here. What I advise you to do is to turn on D3D Metal, which is Game Porting Toolkit's translation layer. And then we're going to go ahead and turn on M-Sync, which is a Mac specific alternative to E-Sync. And this is going to help improve performance as well. And once that's ready, we're going to double click on Steam and log in again. So once Steam's gone ahead and launched from Crossover, what we're going to do is do a search for the word Power World. So we're just going to type this in and then we're going to go ahead and make a purchase of this game. So here we're just going to scroll down and then purchase the game here, add to cart. And then here I'm going to purchase for myself. And now that's complete, we can press install content or you can go to library, then type in the word Pal World and then go ahead and press the install button and then install this on your computer. Then just go ahead and accept the end user licensing agreement. And then this is going to start us download. And then we're going to wait for this to complete. So now that the download's complete, we're going to go to a library and then go to Power World and then press the play button. And it's going to launch for the first time. So just be aware at the moment we're running with D3D Metal turned on and M-Sync turned on as well. So it's going to make use of game porting toolkit, D3D Metal and also M-Sync functionality. So here we're going to go ahead and launch and just wait for that to finish loading. Here it's saying that the installed version of the AMD graphics driver has known issues. We're going to skip this. We don't need to download AMD graphics drivers, just press no here. And then it's going to go ahead and launch the game. So I have the Metal HUD activated here. If you want to find out how to do this, I'll leave a link to my video tutorial in the description. So it might take a bit of time to load up, but after a minute or two, you're going to see this loading icon and then the patch notes are going to appear. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and launch games. So here on my MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip and 40 GPU cores, the game runs pretty well. We're getting about 60 FPS on 1080p on the very low graphics setting. Considering the fact that this is translating x86 to ARM64, Windows into macOS, and DirectX 11 into Metal, this isn't necessarily bad performance, especially as this is an Unreal Engine 5 game. However, there is one simple trick which allows this game to more than double its performance on a Mac, and that involves launching through Direct DirectX 12 mode instead of DirectX 11 and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So all we need to do is to close down PowerWorld and then go back to the Windows version of Steam running through Crossover. Within PowerWorld and Library we're going to right click go to Properties and then within Launch Options we're going to make sure we have this dash DX12 code listed here so that it launches in DirectX 12 rather than DirectX 11. And once we're back in game you can see on the right hand side we're running DirectX 12 and it is way smoother running at double the frame rate of DirectX 11. So running through DirectX 12 is pretty great however there are some performance improvements that we can apply which are going to improve performance even more and that's going to be really helpful especially on lower end max for example the m1 chip and for this we're going to apply this mod which has actually originally been designed for the steam deck it's basically a set of Unreal Engine 5 any tweaks, but this also works on the Windows version of PowerWorld running through Crossover. So I'm gonna leave a link to this mod in the description. And in order to download mods from Nexus Mods, we have to be logged into an account. So make sure to create a free account and then log in. And once you've logged in, we can go ahead and download the mods. So the mod we're gonna download is the Steam Deck Essentials All Handheld Pal World. And this is gonna work on a Mac through Crossover as well. So we're gonna click on the Files tab here and then click on Manual Download. And this is gonna allow us to download the mod. We're going to scroll down and then click the slow download button here to download this for free. Press save. Next we're going to open up Finder and then go to our downloads folder and then double click on the SD Essentials zip file. It's going to extract this on our Mac and double click on this here. I'm just going to take a look at the readme and it says here we need to place the engine I knife into our local user folder. So the update folder can be a bit tricky to find but I'm going to show you by going through crossover. Then we need to right click on the Steam bottle here and then click on Open C Drive. So that's going to navigate us to the Windows installation within the bottle. So within here, what we're going to do is to find the app data folder first. So we need app data local PAL. So that's located within the user folder of the drive C. Then we're going to expand this crossover, which is the default user. Then we want to expand app data, then expand local, and then expand PAL. We double click on here. We can see under saved, config, Windows. We have this folder, double click, and then we need to scroll down until we find the engine.ini. And this is basically the Unreal Engine 5 ini file, which contains all of the configuration. And what we want to do is to take our SDL Essentials Power World, expand the engine ini, and then we're going to select one of the ini's here to replace this ini with so that we can get better performance. So you have the option here of adding the cartoon art style or light cartoon art style, but we're just going to go ahead and apply this performance mod using the normal art style. And the one I'm going to be selecting here is the engine.ini underneath the Ultra Performance FXAA. So this is going to be the version we're going to use if we're not going to apply this type of anti-aliasing. And this is going to give better performance than TSR, I think. So before we replace the engine.ini, what I recommend you do is just press copy and then paste to make a backup of the engine.ini. And basically we're going to drag and drop engine.ini from this FXAA folder into this folder here. And then we're going to replace this file. So that's going to replace all of the engine configurations. So this game can squeeze any extra performance out of turning any of the settings down. And then the last thing we're going to do is to add the mods folder into the packs folder. So I'm going to show you how to do this from scratch. What we need to do is to navigate to our Power World installation folder. So what we're going to do is go into crossover again, control click on Steam, go to open C drive. And then within here, what we're going to do is to navigate to our Steam installation folder. So most commonly that's going to be in our program files x86 within Steam and then within the Steam apps folder, we're going to navigate to that within common and then within there, there should be the Power World folder. Or if you're like me, I've installed it on my NAS, just double click on Power World here and then go into PAL and then content and then packs. And then we need to place our mods folder here. So if we just go back into our STL Essentials folder, so there should be no mods folder here. I'm just going to drag and drop this into here. And then it's going to copy the mods folder and inside it contains the SD Essentials underscore p.pack. So now we're ready to launch the game. So just go ahead and launch Crossover here and then launch Steam. Then Steam within Power and Library, we're going to right click, go to Properties. And then within Launch Options, we're going to make sure we have this dash DX12 
code listed here so that it launches in DirectX 12 rather than DirectX 11. And that's going to give us the maximum possible performance. So you can see the game looks substantially different from very low. The graphics are way worse, the draw distance is worse, the fog isn't there anymore, and there are no shadows basically, and it looks terrible. However, we are getting much better performance, capping out at around 115, 120 FPS, which is basically the display refresh rate limit. So I'll leave it up to you whether you think that going this low is actually worth it to get to this level of performance, especially because there's a pretty big graphical leap downwards in order to get this level of quality. However, the PALs don't look that bad necessarily. These actually look pretty good. They look very similar to the original PALs. And I think what suffers most is the geometry, the graphics of the shadows of the grass. It looks way less realistic. We have much more pop in, etc. This is the ultra performance mod after all, and there are gonna be substantial sacrifices to graphical quality. However, the devices that are gonna benefit the most are gonna be the lowest end Max. For example, the MacBook Air with the eight gigabyte RAM, eight GPU core is a very low end chip. It's now more than three years old. And without the performance tweaks, it's virtually unplayable. But with DirectX 12 and this performance mod enabled, we're getting about a 50% FPS uplift. So this is really worth doing, especially if you're on a low-end Mac. However, you can't expect miracles. And because eight gigabytes of RAM is actually shared unified memory between the GPU and the system, as soon as you start going over eight gigabytes, your Mac will start dumping data onto your SSD using it as swap. And it's gonna make your entire computer and game crawl to a standstill. So I think this game is playable on the base M1, but you need really 16 gigabytes of RAM ideally. So the mod doesn't necessarily have to be run on the ultra performance mode. Here I've got it on the quality FXAA mode and we're running the game on the Epic Graphics preset. And for some reason this mod fixes the eye shader issues. So we now have color in our eyes and there's a general performance uplift on this Epic Graphics setting. What the performance mod seems to do is to allow pop-in to happen with textures and it really seems to curtail draw distance as well. But a combination of these mods seems to be a good solution. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you figure any other performance tips for Powerworld then please make sure to leave a comment. If anyone finds a controller fix then please let me know as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.